A German director, writer, producer, actor, photographer, and dancer, she was considered to be a historic trailblazer in film. This is Lenny Riefenstahl. In spite of all these accomplishments, however, she is known for one thing above anything else. Es spricht der Führer. Lenny Riefenstahl, one of the first female power players in film and a Nazi propagandist. Bet you did not see that coming, right? <laughs> Let's get started. So how did we get here? How did a dance prodigy end up making Nazi propaganda? Inspired to dance as a child after a showing of Disney's Snow White, she would go on to quickly become top in her class before performing in a traveling dance troupe. Before that, she had no interest in film. It wasn't until a foot injury landed her in a doctor's office that she was inspired to get into film after seeing a poster for The Mountain of Destiny. She was able to begin a fruitful partnership with geologist turned filmmaker Dr. Arnold Frank, a pioneer in the mountain film genre. It was during this time she was able to learn technical aspects of filmmaking. She would go on to star in several movies directed by Frank, including The Holy Mountain, The Great Leap, The White Hell of Pitts Palou, Storm Over Melt Blank, White Ecstasy, and SOS Iceberg. After these movies made her a star, she was finally able to stretch her creative muscles and would go on to direct, produce, edit, and star in The Blue Light, a mountain film about an outcasted woman who townsfolk believe is a witch. To be perfectly honest, I have no idea what's happening in this movie, because I don't speak German. But you can really see her artistry at play in spite of that. Her eye for natural landscapes is evident throughout this film. The Blue Light would go on to receive some critical acclaim. It would also get the attention of Adolf Hitler. This guy. The one in the shorts. He would go on to commission three Nazi films from her. The most noteworthy is Triumph of the Will, a film so effective in its task that Frank Capra would go on to make similar propaganda for the Allies. Triumph of the Will is effective propaganda because of how well it plays with perspective and how it tells a story using real footage. Let's break it down. The stage will be set with Germany being portrayed as a destitute country, reeling from the effects of World War I until its supposed rebirth. This rebirth is thanks to a savior or messiah who literally comes down from the sky to save them. The film is smart to not be a landslide of just doom and gloom, opting instead for shots of a smiling Hitler shaking hands with people while children are playing. It isn't until much later that we began to see misplaced nationalism turn into vulgar displays of power. Pay attention to how the camera is always pointing up at Hitler to demonstrate power. Neben die herrliche 
And by the end, the smiling Hitler from earlier has morphed into the personification of evil that we've all come to hate. Triumph is successful in its mission because of how it portrays Germany and its citizens as economic victims of war, and Hitler is the godlike figure who was destined to save them. While Riefenstahl's Nazi propaganda days were more or less in the rearview mirror, Hitler decided what better way to demonstrate the superiority of the Aryan race than having Riefenstahl shoot the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. What could go wrong? In spite of malicious intent behind it, Olympia is often considered one of the greatest sports documentaries of all time. Lenny's talent as a dancer shows in her footage of these athletes performing. She unquestionably has an eye for bodies in motion. Notice how the camera stays focused on the athletes and not whatever it is they happen to be throwing. So where does this leave Lenny Riefenstahl? After the end of the war, she was put through the ringer in multiple denazification proceedings and found to be a Nazi sympathizer, but was not actually prosecuted. But at this point, it didn't matter. She was essentially blacklisted from the film industry, only finishing her last film, Tiefland, after it had been in production for 26 years. She would live almost another 50 years without shooting a major film. Any hopes of feeling empathy towards her are dashed once you learn that she used gypsies from concentration camps as extras in Tieflin. So how should we appraise Lenny Riefenstahl? It's the classic question of art versus the artist. Lenny was an unquestionably talented trailblazer in her industry. This is all the more remarkable considering she was a power player in the early 1900s, and we still have an issue with the treatment of women in the workplace to this day. I guess it falls to the viewer to decide how we should reflect on Lenny's successes and failures. If only there was another modern auteur filmmaker who holds repugnant views that we could compare her to. Oh, right.